Okay, this is the first review for your grade 8 exam. These are your first four chapters from your textbooks. The chapters of this test includes are ratio and rates, fraction operations, decimals and percents, and uh, what's the last one? Surface area and Pythagorean theorem. Okay, there's a few different things in there. Okay. So your first question is a multiple choice. It says, determine the value of x if x to 48 is equivalent to 7 to 3. So the first thing you should know is if you were looking at this question and it was a multiple choice question, you know that it's equivalent to an improper fraction or it's equivalent to uh, a ratio whose first term is larger than its second term. So right off the bat, because of that, you can eliminate those two as possible answers because you know you can't have the top number being uh, smaller than the, the bottom number or the first term being bigger than the second term or the smaller than the second term or the first term, the numerator being smaller than the denominator. So right now we have two choices, it's C and D. So really a good multiple choice test taker would narrow it down to that. Or you could say, in order to get this 48, I know that I multiplied 3 by 16, because 16 times 3 is 48. Therefore, I'd have to multiply this by 16. And even if I can't multiply, I know definitively that it's not 80, because it's got to be bigger than 80, because 10 times 7 is 70. So I know, without even doing the multiplication for 7 times 16, the answer has to be D. However, that's one way you could do it with multiple choice test strategy. The easier way to do it is if you're solving an unknown proportion, create your algebraic equation, 3x equals 210 and 56 is 266. Divide both sides by 3 and take your calculator and go, oops, a daisy. 266 divided by 3 is, oh, I did something wrong. I multiplied something wrong there. Let's try 48 times 7 again. Did I multiply that wrong? Yes, it's 336. Oops, that's not very good. Then divide that by 3, and you get 112. x equals 112. The second question says determine the value in this one. If uh, So we know for this one, here we have a regular, sorry, 63 equals 7 over x. So my numerator in my fraction is smaller than my denominator, so I have a proper fraction. Okay, so equals 7 over x. So I know that I can eliminate none of them because they're all going to be correct, except I could probably eliminate that one because 7 over 14 would make it 50%, and I know that 49 out of 63 is not 50%. So now I'm down to three questions. Um, since this is more than half, we know that this is more than half, uh, I could eliminate this one because 7 out of 32 would be much less than half, so that I can eliminate that one. And now I'm down to a 50-50 choice again. I can really, if I wanted to guess, I could probably take a guess. But I'm going to make this solving proportions using algebra. 63 times 7, I better not do it mentally this time, because I didn't do so well last time. It is 441. And once you've created that equation, you can divide it by your coefficient, which is 49 and x will equal 9. So your answer is A. The third question says, traffic counters find that of the 7,025 private vehicles using a particular intersection, 5,620 are carrying only one person. What percent of the vehicles using that intersection are carrying one person? So really we're just asking you, do you understand what a fraction is or what a part to whole ratio is? So out of the 7,025 private vehicles, 5,620 of them are one-person vehicles. So that's a part-to-whole ratio. Take your calculator, 5620 divided by 7025 as a decimal is 0 0.8, and therefore as a percentage, 80% of them are carrying uh, one person only. Question four, four students are running for student council president. Of 30 students polled, 15 chose Mike, three chose Patricia, and six chose Brian. And the rest chose Karen. What is the ratio of votes for girls to votes for boys? Hold on. What is the ratio of votes for girls 
to votes for boys in the student council election. So we're going girls to boys. Express your ratio in lowest terms. So uh, for boys, for girls, sorry, first, three chose Patricia. And we don't know how many chose Karen, but if we do a quick mental math here, 15 plus 3 is 18. That's 24. That means that six must have voted for Karen because there were 30 students in total. Which means that three chose Patricia and six chose Karen. Nine girls to 21 boys would be your ratio in non-lowest terms. Both have three as a common factor. So in lowest terms, it would be three to seven. So your answer is A. Question four, Eric is able to stop 85% of the shots on goal. If he faces 27 shots on goal, how many shots would like to be scored on him? So we're looking for uh, if he stops 85%, uh, how many would likely be scored, which means 15% 15% of the shots, of the 27 shots, are goals. If 85% are stopped, then 15% are not stopped, which means 15% of 27 is how many get scored. So 15% of 27 is a simple computation. Take a Vuitton calculator. 15% of 27 is 4.05, or approximately four goals would be scored on them. Question six, a photo with a width to length ratio of two to three. So, so width to length. That is a ratio of width to length. And the, and the ratio for that is it's two parts width to three parts length. So the first thing I can do is set it up like that. And then it says in the second part, if the width is 4.8, what is its length? So really what we have here is a proportion. And there's three different ways we could solve it. The first way is if I know that 2 times 2.4 is 4.8, I can multiply this by 2.4 and I get 7.2, which is your answer. I could also solve it by taking my algebraic equation approach, 2x equals 14.4, uh, divide both sides by 2, and x will equal 7.2. And I could also solve it by creating, uh, well, I guess that's the only two ways that you really want to solve this one, but those two are the, the ways to solve it for 7.2. Question 7, there are 42 cars in a parking lot. Of these, 24 vehicles are imports, while the rest are made in North America. What is the ratio of imported vehicles, imported, to North American vehicles? So imported, uh, 24 are imported. You have to do a quick mental math. Since there's 42 cars in total, that must mean that uh, six, 18 of them were, imp uh, were North American vehicles because 18 plus 24 is the 42 cars. And it says, what is the ratio of imported vehicles to those made in North America in lowest terms? So we have 24 to 18 or 12 to 9 because I can reduce both by 2. And I can reduce further by 3 to get 4 to 3. So in lowest terms, the answer is B, 4 to 3. Uh, a survey of students in school found that 144 had Motorola cell phones. You guys don't even know what a Motorola cell phone is anymore. Do you? Okay. Okay. 60 had Sony phones, which is... I don't think any of you have any of these brands anymore. And 48 had Nokia and 36 had LG. Okay, okay, okay. So what percent of all the phones were Motorola? So the first thing I have to do is realize that in order for percents to be achieved, I have to have a part to whole ratio. So Motorola was uh, 144 kids had Motorola. And in order to find the whole part, I have to add them all up. So 144 plus 36 is 180. 180 plus 60 is 240. That's 280. That's 288. 
So there were 288 people surveyed, 144 of them were Motorola, 144 out of 288 is a pretty easy one to do. That's 50% of the kids surveyed had Motorola cell phones. Question nine says use a three term ratio to compare the numbers of the three most popular phones in the last question. So if we go back to that last question, the three most popular phones was 144 to 60 to 48. Those are the three most, I'm gonna cut these. So, there we go. Those are not in the lowest terms. I don't think. So if I reduce them by a factor of two, I get 72 to 30 to 24. That's still not lowest terms. I get 36 to 15 to 12, which is still not lowest terms. 12 to five to four, which means B is your answer. Question 10 says, Sandra works at a car wash and makes eight seventy-five an hour. After working five and a half hours, Sandra will make. Simply take 7.5 in one hour is equal to X over 5.5. Most of you realize you just have to, you don't need to solve it. You can just multiply both by 5.5. 5. 8.75 an hour multiplied by five and a half hours means she makes roughly $48 if we round it and 13 cents. What is the square of five? The square of five means this. If it says what is the square root of five, the answer would be approximately, oh so that's four, five would be two point something. Yes, because I think somebody would, if I put two point something there, right, and then the multiple choice wasn't there. Yes. Yeah. So on your exam, you'll probably have that question, but I'll probably have as a distractor 2.2. 2. Yeah? What? Oh, for then I didn't say that. Oh, my God, you know what the question's going to be on the exam. Um, question 12, which number is a perfect square? Which number is a perfect square? So a perfect square is a number who has an identical pair of factors. So 9 has an identical pair of factors of 3 and 3. No other number, 5, 7, or 11, in that group has a pair of identical factors. So therefore, 9 is the only perfect square. 13, for prime factorization, if we look at 78, we can break it down into different combinations of numbers. If I put, let's just do something. Uh, what's 8 going to be? How about, I can't think now. Well, I know that 2 and 39 is one way to multiply. This is a prime number, but 39 is not prime because it has more than two factors. Uh, a prime number only has one in itself as factors. 39 has 3 and 13, but 3 is a prime factor and 13 is a prime factor. So the only way to multiply using prime factors to get 78 is 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 13. Okay, question number 14 says, which number is not a prime factor of 210? So again, we got to take our 210, and we can break it down into, I'm going to break it down into two non-prime numbers. So 21 times 10 is one way to get it. And 21 can be thought of as being this prime number multiplied by this prime number. So 21 times 10 or 3 times 7 times 10 are two ways to get 210. But 10 is not prime. It can be broken up into 2 and 5. So the prime factors of 210 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. 2, 3, 5, and 7. The only one that's not is the number 13. So your answer is D. Question 15. Which set of side lengths belongs to a right triangle? So really what it's asking you is, since you know the longest side is a hypotenuse, so we'd have 3, 12, and 16 for this. Is this a right triangle? Well, this would be 9 for the area of the square attached to that leg. This would be 144 for the area of the square attached to that leg. And this one is 16 squared, which is 256. And 9 plus 144 is not 256. 
So we can say it's not that one. The next question is 4, 6, and 11. This would be 16 and 36, and this would be 121. 16 plus 36 is not 121, so we can say that that is not a right triangle. The next one is 6, 8, and 10. This would be 36. This would be 64, 64. This would be 100. And 36 plus 64 is 100. So therefore, that is a right triangle. I don't need to bother checking the next one. I just know that that is. So therefore, the answer is C. Determine the side length of the hypotenuse. So again, we could do it one of two ways. I could actually attach squares to the legs. Or I could write my theorem out, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to do it this way. Remember, your legs are your two sides of a right triangle that make up this 90 degree angle. So 28 squared plus 21 squared will equal the hypotenuse, which is c squared. Take my calculator out. 28 squared is 784 plus 21 squared is 441. Add those two together, I get 1,225 equals c squared. Now, in order to find out what c is, I have to square root both sides. So if I take my 1,225 and square root it, there's the button right there. Where is it? Right here. I end up getting 35. So the square root of that is 35. The square root of x, or c squared, is c. So therefore, the length of your hypotenuse is 35. Question 17, the value of the square root of 17, or 77, excuse me, square root of 77. So it says, between which two numbers? Well, I know that the square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of 81 is 9. So the square root of 77 has to fall somewhere in this spectrum, which means it's between 8 and 9. Question 18, if d squared equals 27 squared plus 27 squared, what is the approximate value of d? So really we have uh, a, a semi-partially filled in Pythagorean theorem. So 27 squared is that. So I'm going to times that by 2 and double it. So the square root of that is 38.2, which means that d is my best answer for the approximate value of d, because I had to round it. That's why it says approximate. 19, where would the square root of 3 be located? Well, the square root of 1 on this number line is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 3 would be somewhere between 1 and 2, and the only numbers between 1 and 2 is this one, which means C is your answer. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is drawn from the diameter of a circle. Okay, so there it is there. As the hypotenuse is the diameter of a circle. There it is right there. The radius of the circle is 17.5 centimeters. What is the approximate length of the unknown leg? So if I take this triangle and move it out here and rotate it, the hypotenuse is uh, double the radius, which would make it um, 35 centimeters, because the radius here is 17. So this would be double that. So doubling 17.5 is 35. This leg here is 24, which means this is the unknown leg. So if I attach squares to it, I'm going to solve the Pythagoras a different way. 24 squared is 24 multiplied by itself. It's 576. And 35 squared, I'll use the x squared button, is 1225. So this square plus this square has to equal this square's area. So if I take that 1225 and subtract 576, I will find out that this one is 649. And the square root of that is approximately B, 25.5. What percent is represented by the diagram if the completely shaded grid represents 100%? So this is 100%. This would be 3%. And this would be a third of a percent. So your answer would be 103 and a third percent, which is right here. If this is a 100%, this would only be a quarter of a percent, because they're not even 1%, it's a quarter of a percent, which as a decimal is a quarter of a percent. 
Jake scored these marks on four tests. Which was his highest? Well, this one I think most people know is 75%. This one would be 80%. So I'm changing them all to percentages. This would be 85%. And this one would be 90% if we change them all to percentages. So therefore, which is the largest or the best test score? 18 out of 20. Question 24, which fraction is smaller than decimal 2.8? So because this is in decimal form, I can either change them all to percentages or I can change them all to decimals. I'm going to change them all to percentages. I'm going to say which of these fractions is less than 28%. Oh, well, no, you know, I'm not going to. I'm going to say, I'm going to change them to decimals and look to see which one's less than decimal 2.8. So to change any fraction to decimal, all you have to do is take your numerator, divide it by your denominator, this one is decimal 4. That is not smaller. We know this one already because it's decimal 3 repeating. 3 divided by 9 is decimal 3 repeating, so it's not that one. 8 divided by 25 is decimal 3, 2. It's not that one. I'm hoping it's the last one. Uh, I'll bring it over here. Ooh. 9 divided by 36 is decimal 2, 5, which means my answer is D. Again, same question, except this time it's percentages. Which fraction is the same as 12%? So because we're given fractions, we know that 12 over 1 is not 12%. That's actually 1,200%, um, so it's not that one for sure. This one is more than 100%, 12 out of 10, so we're going to erase that one too because 12 out of 10 would be 120%. So really we're down to two of them. So if I take 3 divided by 25 as a decimal, it's 0 0.12, which is 12 hundredths, which is 12%. So my answer right off the bat is A, 3 out of 25. Question 26, which of these is uh, 180%? So if I look at all of them, they have to be fractions where the numerator is greater than the denominator to be more than 100%. So right off the bat, I know it's not 18 out of 100, because it's 18%, not 180%. And in order to change them all, I need to change them to decimals. So this is actually 9 fifths, 8 fifths, and this is 9 eighths. I'm going to change them to improper fractions first. And if I change it to percentage, I know my, my equivalent fraction has to be out of 100. Here I would multiply by 20. I get 180 out of 100, which is 180%. So my answer is A, but I'm going to double check my other ones. The equivalent fraction to this that has a denominator of 100 is 160 out of 100, which is 160%, not this one. And this one, this is a trickier one. I know that I multiply 8 by 12.5, and 9 times 12.5 is 112.5, which is 112.5. The answer is A. Question 27, a piece of fabric that is 78.25 centimeters long was cut from a 200 centimeter piece of fabric. So there is a 200 centimeter piece of fabric. And from that, I'm going to cut off a 78.25 centimeter piece of fabric. What percent of the fabric is left behind? So what percent of the original 200 centimeters is left behind? So the first thing I have to do is subtract them. And I figure out that this is 121.75 because this plus this has to equal my 200. So therefore, 121 decimal 75 out of the 200 centimeter piece was what fraction was left behind. Do a simple, oh, I better take this up here. 121 decimal 75 divided by the 200 will change it into a decimal, which is 60, sorry, 0 decimal 6, 60875, which means it's 60 decimal 875%. Now, looking at the choices, the only one that must be that is this one. So i got to just double check to see if 7 eighths is 875. So see what 7 eighths is as a decimal, and it is this, which means my answer is B. Question 28. In a recent survey, 300 students were asked about the type of pets they own. The results showed that 131 students own dogs, 71 students own cats, 7 students own golf, goldfish, and the rest do not have pets. What percent of students do not own pets? So 71 plus 7 plus 131. This would be 130 plus 70 is 200. 201, 202, 209. So 209 
out of 300 own different pets, which means 91 out of the 300 students surveyed do not own pets. So if I could change 91 divided by 300 into a decimal, it would be 0 decimal 3, 0 and a third, or 30 and a third percent, which is right there. 29. Anita earns 4.5% commission on a sale of $230. To the nearest cent, how much commission should she have received? So 4.5% of the $230 will be her commission. 4.5% is 4.5 out of 100, or 45 out of 1,000, or 0 does 0, 4, 5. Of 230 is a simple calculator calculation. So 4.5% is 0 decimal 45 of the $230. Her commission, therefore, will be $10.35. Question 30. Raymond's class sold 325 chocolate bars for charity. This is 65% of all the chocolate bars that they were given. So here is all the chocolate bars they were given. All the chocolate bars. And he sold 65%, which ended up being 325 bars. So 65%, 65% of an unknown number ended up being 325. So 65% of all the chocolate bars they sold, or we're going to call it the variable X, was 325 bars. So 65% as a decimal is this. And when I say of x, I really mean multiplied by x, which really is a coefficient, equals 325. Now once I get it to there, I know I can isolate this by dividing by 0 0.65. And if I take the 325 bars divided by decimal 65, it will tell me x equals 500. Go back to my original drawing up here. Therefore, 65% of 500 should be 325, which is true. So the answer is B, 500. Question 31, the surface area of this triangular prism could be calculated as. So again, we have five faces. There are two of them that are triangles. So we have two that are base times height divided by two. And we have three rectangles. We have an LW and an LW. And an LW. So that's really the formula that we learned to calculate for the uh, tr uh, the area of a triangular prism, surface area of a triangular prism. But if I go back here and erase this, uh, if it is four centimeters, then this would be three centimeters because when we have a um, well, we don't know that for sure, do we? Do we know that? No, we don't know that, do we? No, we don't. But it ends up being that if you look at it this way, we know that this is 5 centimeters and this is 5 centimeters. And therefore, we have um, a triangular prism where two of these rectangles are going to be 8 and 5. Okay, two of them are going to be 8 and 5. And right here, we see two of them that are 8 and 5. And this bottom one is going to be a 8 and 6, which is right here. Now, there's my two triangles. So your answer for this one was a kind of a tricky one. It was C. So you had to really use a little bit of logic on that one. 32 says find the surface area of the following rectangular prism. So again, this is a rectangular prism. So we know that this is a square, which means this is 3, this is 3, this is 3, this is 3. So all of those are 3. So four of the sides are going to be 6 by 3. And the ends are going to be 3 by 3, so there's going to be two of those. So I have four sides, the top, the bottom, the front, the back, that are all 6 by 3. So we have four that are 18. When we work that out, it becomes 72. And the left and the right are both 3 by 3, so we have two that are going to be 9 each, which is 18. When I add those together, I get 90 square centimeters of surface area. Question 33 says, to find the surface area of a cube, you must know the dimensions of. Well, if I think about a cube, all the faces are the same. So if I know the area of one face, all I have to do is multiply that by 6 
and I would know the surface area of the cube. So the answer is I only need to know the area of one face, and once I know that, I've multiplied by six to get the total surface area. Question 34, a tube for potato chips is a cylinder with a diameter of six centimeters and a height of 12. So I'm going to just draw that. So it has a diameter of six centimeters and a height of 28 centimeters. What is the total surface area of the cube? So if I draw my net for this, this would be six and this would be 28. This distance here is really the same distance as the circumference of the circle. So circumference is really the same thing as pi d. So this length is going to be pi d, and this is going to be really that 28 is really h. So this whole rectangle, the area of that rectangle, can be calculated by taking pi d, which is the circumference, and multiplying it by h. So we're going to estimate, or we're going to use 3.14. 3.14 times 6 times 28 will be the area of that face. Take my calculator. 3.14 times 6 times 28. The area of that one face is 527.52. But that's not the only part of the cylinder. I also have two circles. The area of this circle is pi r squared, which is 3.14 times the radius being 3 squared, or 3.14 times 9. The answer for that is 28.16, or 26. There are two of those. This is a top circle and a bottom circle. So the circles work out to be that. Plus the third face, which is 527.52. Some people don't like calling that third one a face, but I do. The overall surface area, according to my calculations, is 584.04. So the answer is A. Question 35, what is the total surface area of a cylinder with a radius of 1? A radius of 1 and a height of 12. So two circles, which is 2 pi r squared, plus that pi dh, which we did in the last one, would be 2, 3.14 times 1 squared, plus 3.14 times 2 times 12, because the, if the radius is 1, then the diameter would be 2. Uh, this would be 2 times 3.14 times 1 squared, which is 1, or 6.28, plus 3.14 times 24. So 3.14 times 2 times 12 is 75.36. When you add that to the area of the two circles being 6.28, you get 81.64, which makes your answer for 35, C. Question 36 is the distance between the adjacent dots. Now, this is the one that I guess the answer isn't present. So uh, I'm going to skip this one because it's a bizarre question and it doesn't have an answer. So we're going to pretend 36 does not exist and we're going to go right on to 37. 37 says the total surface area for this 3D object. Again, we have how many cylinders could we possibly have? So 2 pi r squared plus pi dh is your formula. 2, 3.14 times the radius, which is right here. 3 squared plus pi. If the radius was 3, then the diameter is 6, and the height would be 9. So there's the height of the cylinder. Even though it's on its side, that's still considered the height. So we have 6.28 times 9, which is 6.28. 6.28 times 9 is 56.52 plus 3.14. 3.14 times times 54 equals 169.56, 169.56. When you add those two together, you're going to have 220 something. So your answer has to be C because I don't even know what it is, but it has to be that. Question number 38 says the price of gas started at a buck nine per liter. The price dropped by 10% and then later increased by 15% of the reduced price. What is the new price of gas? So. If it dropped 10%, you could either find 10% and subtract it from a dollar nine. But if a price drops, so here's the here's the dollar nine. I love thinking of it this way. Here's your dollar nine. If it drops 10%, then 10% would be taken off the price, which means 
you were paying for 90% of the dollar nine. If 10% is dropped, you're still paying 90% of the dollar nine, which means 90% of the dollar nine means the new price of gas is 98 and a tenth cent per liter. But then it goes up by 15%. So this is the 98.1 cents. And if it goes up 15%, this was 100%. So if it goes up 15%, you're really paying for 115% of the 98.1 cents. So 115% is really that, because 1 is 100%, 0 0.15 is 15% of the decimal 981 or 98.1 cents. Your final answer will be roughly, rounded to the nearest cent, 113 or dollar thirteen per liter. Question thirty nine. On Friday, twenty three girls and seventy eight boys went on a field trip to the aquarium. Ninety five and thirteen twentieths percent of the girls and seven and seven tenths of the boys saw the beluga whales. How many students saw the beluga whales? So, so we're first going to find ninety five and thirteen twentieths percent of twenty three. So 13 twentieths is really the same thing as decimal 65. So 95.65% is the same thing as that, which means as a decimal, since this is the same as this above here, then this one must be this. So really, this is how many girls saw it. So if I take my calculator and go 95 and 23rd, 23, 20th or 60.65 of 23 girls is roughly 22 girls. So, oh, it can't be right. Is that right? Oh, yeah, 22 girls, roughly. I guess there wasn't a part girl there. Um, and 7 and 7 tenths, so 7 and 7 tenths percent, or 0 decimal 0, 7, 7 percent, or not percent as a decimal, of 78 boys. Take my calculator. So, seven and seven tenths of the 78 boys is approximately six boys. So, if 22 girls and six boys saw the beluga whales all together, 28 kids saw beluga whales. And the last question Jenny collects hockey cards and three quarters of a percent, so less than one percent of her cards are considered rare. If Jenny has six rare cards, so these are all of Jenny's cards. These are all of her cards. And 0.34 percent, 0.75 percent, or three quarters percent, are rare. And that is six. Okay? So, <clears throat> if we think of all of her cards as being X again, so 0.75% of all her cards equals six cards. Or since this is 0 0.75 out of 100, or 75 out of 10,000, or 0 0.0075, this number as a decimal is this. And of x is really the same thing as treating it like a coefficient. So 0.75 or three quarters of a percent of all her cards is really a coefficient variable relationship. Okay. And that equals six cards. So point three quarters of a percent of all her cards is six. So if I divide by this coefficient and take my calculator and say the six rare cards divided by means that all together, all of her cards, since that's X, she must have 800 cards, which means your answer is C.